Hi there. This is part three of a series of tutorials where I'm showing you how to draw stock charts, also known as line charts. In this particular tutorial, we will focus on how to animate charts and also how to animate the loading process. So this is what we're going to build at the end of this tutorial. Here you can see the loading animation. And as soon as the loading animation is done, the chart is also animated. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So here we are in Xcode, and this is basically the project where we stopped after part two of our series. So if you haven't watched part one and part two, make sure you watch it because otherwise it won't make much sense. So um, there are a few things that I would like to do before we continue. Let's refactor the code so it looks a bit more cleaner and we can continue. So this line graph I will put into a new file. Just create a new file and call it line graph. Put it in here and also make sure you import Swift UI like so. And then we can simply remove it from our content view. Next, I would also like to um, remove this extension. For now, I will just create a new file and I will just simply call it utils. And here we are going to import the array extension. Now, since we're using CG float here, we have to also import Swift UI. All right, back to the content view. Now we can remove this and it looks much better now. I would also like to remove the border that we added in part two of the series because we don't need it anymore. Let's resume again and see if it still works. Nice, perfect. All right, now we can continue. Let's start with animating the chart. To do that, I will initially introduce a state variable, like so. We can make it private, and I will simply call it animate chart, and it will be initially set to false. Next, I'm going to use a modifier on the line graph that is called trim. And that basically helps us to perform the animation because trim takes a from and to and based on the values, it basically trims our chart. For example, we could say uh, start here and stop here. So it basically trims our chart, right? And we will use it as follows. And we won't use the from, but we will use the to. So let me remove this part and and we will simply say if animate chart, the Boolean is true, we will set it to one. Otherwise we will set it to zero. Now we still haven't uh, performed the animation yet or we haven't even set the animate chart to true at this, any spot here. So we're going to do it now. The way we're going to do it is we're going to call the on up here function. And in here we are simply going to say with animation, we don't need this part here. We can, we can say with animation, set the animate chart boolean to true. Also in here, we can also decide how we want it to animate. And I prefer the following animation, which is an ease in out with a duration of two. You can play around with other numbers and see what you like more, but this is the one I preferred. Now let's see if this already uh, solves the problem for us. As you can see, the animation works just as we expected it. Now the next thing we have to solve is the loading process. So we want to show some kind of loading animation while the chart is still loading. And for that, I'm going to introduce a new view and I will call it chart loader, like so. And in here, I will define obviously the body, like so. And we will have a VStack in here, 
And the first thing in the restack is going to be the text that says loading. Let's also modify it a bit so it looks nicer. Let's give it a custom font. I will use the font of a near with the size of let's say 16. So far so good. Now to animate this uh, rectangle, let me show you show it to you again. Now to animate it like we have it here, what I simply did is I used a rounded rectangle and this is what we're going to do here as well. So let's have a look at this. Let's start by defining a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 25. We will give it a fill color of blue, like so. We will also give it a frame with a width and a height. So the width is going to be the UI screen dot main dot bounce dot width divided by two and the height we want it to be pretty thin so let's say three we don't need the alignment so we just remove this part all right um, now um, similarly to the line graph we have to also use a animation in here and since this animation is a bit longer I will create a separate property for it. So I will simply say the animation is a constant that looks like this. It's an ease in out with a duration of one and we want it to repeat forever and auto reverses should be set to true because we want it to reverse. Now we also need a state property. Let me make some space here. And the state property is used to keep track of whether we are already at the maximum scale because we are going to scale it soon. And we also have to keep track of the maximum scale. So we simply say the maximum scale should be type CG float and definitely not bigger than 1.5. All right, so now we can actually use the scale effect right after we use the frame on the rounded rectangle. So we say scale effect with a CG size and the width is dependent on whether we are at the max scale. So we say if it is at the maximum scale we use the maximum scale, otherwise we use 0 0.01. Now here you can play around with the numbers and see what looks better to you. But this is what I thought looks already pretty nice. So now we have to do the similar thing we did here for the line graph. We would simply say on appear. We do the width animation block here again. And we simply pass the animation we just defined here. And we use it in here, like so. And then here we can simply toggle the variable. Um, so um, self that is at max scale dot toggle. So this is basically all we need. Now we can already start using this chart loader. So um, the way we're going to do it is we're going to put this line graph into a Z stack because we want to stack the loading basically on top of that line graph, especially uh, at least while it's loading. Chart loader will be here like so. But as I said earlier, we don't want it to show every time we want it to show only while this is loading. So. So right now we only have mock data, so there's no real loading and it's kind of hard to simulate this thing. So let's create a view model and fake this uh, loading process. So I will simply create a class. Let's make it final. 
I will call it chart view model and it has to be an observable object because we want to update the Wii every time something here changes. So let's also create this published variable chart data which is initially uh, empty so it contains our normalized points but right now it's empty and at some point we want the view to load our data and then get set so we will use this function called load data and that load data will simply uh, have a delay so we are basically simulating a request and a network request and then we can say dispatch queue that main does a sync and this one where you can pass a deadline so a sync after after and the deadline is going to be let's say three seconds so we say now plus three and when the delay is over we want to simply set the uh, chart data to our mock data that we built in the in part two of our series and make sure we use the normalized uh, version of it okay so now we load the data but um, there's still one problem we need to somehow um, make the loader disappear after the data was loaded so the way we are going to do it is with the completion handler so this load data will also uh, notify the view when this loading is completed and the way we do this is simply saying completion at escaping and what we we don't get anything from it we just want to know if this happened so we say it takes nothing and returns nothing and once this is set we are going to call this completion handler and if this completion handler is called, we can hide this chart loader from the user. So let me show you how this works. So first of all, we're not loading the mock data directly. We're loading it from the V model. And for that, we need to reference to that V model. So let's do that in here. V model is equal to the chart view model also make sure that this is marked as an observed object like so and then we can replace this mock data with the vmodel.chart data so when this uh, line graph first appears we are going to say that the chart loader should be shown so we also need a state variable for that and I will call this one show loader and this will be obviously false initial actually let's move this up a bit so we can sort it better okay so when this line graph appears this on appear uh, callback is called and in here we are going to say first show the loader so show loader is true and then we can use our view model to load the data so this callback is called after this chart data was set so after the three second delay this chart data is set and then we get notified in here so here we can actually say now we don't need the show loader because the data is already there so we simply say show loader is equal to false and then we simply put this animation block right after this assignment now there's one thing we still have to do right now this shot loader is shown every time we only want it to be shown while the show loader variable is set to true so what we're going to do is say if show loader then show us this view All right, perfect. So um, that's pretty much all we need, but let's check if it still works as we expect it to. 
As you can see, here we have the loading animation. And as soon as it is done, the graph is drawn. Nice, so it works just as we wanted it. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when new content arrives. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.